Welcome to the April the 2nd, 2007 taping of It Happened in Grand Prairie, Texas. As we bring you the history of our city and some of the people that have made history in our city and some that are even making history this very day. And this is our history tape number 595, which is a magic number because we're bringing you a magic message today. And it's so wonderful. And the title of our presentation is Impact Grand Prairie, Texas. And it's also many other things. But when I introduce our very special guest today, you're going to be so excited. And you're going to meet one of them in a new role today. I've had her on the show many times before. And of course, uh, she has been a long time Grand Prairie police person. But she's also a lieutenant, the highest ranking female in the police department, and one of my favorite mentors in Grand Prairie. And when you have an old lady that goes back into the very young ages to get a mentor, you know they're very important to some of us. And Lieutenant, I am so glad to have you here with us today. It is, it's real exciting because uh, uh, you have meant so much to Grand Prairie and so many different roles. And uh, I know that uh, many of the people in Grand Prairie see you always in uniform. And Lieutenant Barbara Dixon uh, uh, came out last weekend on a sojourn, and one of the ladies said, what a beautiful lady in an evening gown. Who is she? I said, oh, that's Lieutenant Barbara Dixon of the Grand Prairie Police Department. She said, oh, I've never seen her dressed up like that. And we're so glad that you're in uniform today, my dear. Well, thank you. Thank you for asking me on your show. That's wonderful. And you're going to have a special role to play, but <clears throat> I must get to Becky Purvis. Now, Miss Becky, yeah. I've had her on the television show on another site, and uh, we're just so glad you're back. And you're back stronger than ever, Miss Becky, aren't you? Yes, we are. And, uh, and the group uh, Impact Grand Prairie, you're affiliated with it through the DPR Incorporated, which is the Drug Prevention Resources Incorporated. Yes. Out of Irving, right? Yes. All right, tell us a little bit about yourself and about uh, the DPR and all of the things that you've done before you came into the Impact Group. Uh, as Ruthie said, my name is Becky Purvis. I uh, live in Keller but I'm happy to work in the community of Grand Prairie through my job at Drug Prevention Resources. Mm -hmm. I am the Assistant Program Director for Community Coalitions. Uh, in that role, uh, I am basically the administrative support for the coalition that runs out of Grand Prairie. And then I also work on two sister coalitions, Impact Corsicana and Impact Dallas. Mm -hmm. Well, what, what, what is your job? What is your role? What do you do? Uh, we do a lot of community mobilization. Mm -hmm. Uh, we are funded primarily through state grants. All right. Um, and basically, uh, my role is to help uh, manage the grants and to be able to help provide some guidance to the coalition. We work primarily with um, what we'll call community prevention strategies. Uh, these are strategies aimed at the entire community. Rather than doing a one-on-one -on -one intervention or one-on-one -on -one teaching as you do in a school setting, yes. what mm -hmm. we do is we try to change policies, um, ordinances, um, we try to educate parents um, and all other adults on the, on the consequences of underage drinking in the community. We've also expanded our mission a little bit this year to include all the different substance, abu substance uses. Oh, other than the alcohol, yes. all substance abuses. Yes. Now that's a big field, isn't it? It is. Our, um, our focus has truly been the underage drinking, but we, you know, we, we realize that there are other problems in the community as much as we don't want to admit that there are. Um, but it's really important that we look at all of the different ones um, because uh, uh, alcohol mm -hmm. is the gateway drug. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of kids that are drinking alcohol will then go on to dr do marijuana the and then they can, it can escalate from there. Yeah. Now, last year I attended one of your uh, workshops in Fort Worth, I guess about a year ago, uh, and then I didn't get to attend the one that followed this last Monday because of um, of television priorities right. on that time. And tell me what transpired from one year to the other because I received a very, very important letter that is signed by Mr. Tom Hart, who is our city manager and Impact Grand Prairie, and invited me to the, to the other workshop. 
but the mayor went, I understand. And tell me what happened at your meeting uh, last Monday and how you're bringing Grand Prairie into focus with some of the things that are really important to our citizens, right? Uh, either through schools or through the community. Well, this is the second year we're doing the Those Who Host Lose the Most campaign. Uh -huh. And the message there is that adults should not provide alcohol to, um, to minors. Um, there are specific laws that say that you can't allow uh, minors to drink in your house unless it's your own child. And basically, you cannot provide alcohol to other, other children. Uh, and there is a law against that? Yes. Yes, oh. it is a state law. State law. Um, it's punishable by up to a year in jail, $4,000 fine. Um, you can lose your driver's license for six months. And then also, if a child does drink in your, in your house, you can um, be charged civilly and be resp financially responsible for whatever that child did. So Monday was the kickoff of our sec second annual campaign. Second year. And it's a Metroplex-wide campaign. Uh, we work with other coalitions like the Impact Dallas Coalition and the Impact Corsicana Coalition. In addition, we work with um, the Tarrant County Challenge uh -huh. uh, Coalition and then also the Alliance on Underage Drinking in Dallas. So what we're trying to do is spread the message across the entire Metroplex um, and the the Mondays was a Monday was a press conference. Yes. So the mayors of um, both all Grand Prairie and Arlington, and Mayor Moncrief from Fort Worth, all were able to speak about the initiatives that their their cities were doing um, in terms of trying to um, halt underage drinking. That and really gives you a lot of strong support when you have three magic mayors like that. That'll, that'll take a stand and, mm -hmm. and do a press conference for you. Yes. That really gives strength to your program, doesn't it? <laughs> yes, it does. It definitely lends credibility to it. If somebody that high in the community is willing to say, this is, this is a bad thing, we need to start addressing it at the city level, it's wonderful because you know the hope is that the, you know, the law enforcement people will be able to get more money uh, and more resources to be able to combat the problem. Okay, that's wonderful. I'm going to get <coughs> back with you in a minute, but I, I need mm -hmm. to get uh, the lieutenant all on point here. Lieutenant, what do you think this will do if we can make this new program uh, become more effective and, and help the boys and girls and, and help the parents that don't realize that they may even be breaking the law? Yes, ma'am, that is an issue because we are a diverse city. Yes. So everybody did not grow up with the same moral values and norms. Uh -huh. So that's why the education is so important that we get to these parents saying this is not the correct thing to do. It's a violation of the law and you can be held accountable. So once we get all of those on board and lessen the underage drinking, I think it will cut down on a lot of other crimes, you know, the injuries to the young folks, the deaths yeah. among the traffic, you know, traffic fatalities, and like Becky said, and possibly other substance abuse. Now, I know that uh, you're very involved, and I believe the, the head honcho over the resource officers, and you go into the schools a lot. Uh, do you think that all of the schools are, are helping to with this program? Do you have school representatives on this group that are working with it in this? Either one of y'all would answer that. Yes, ma'am, we do. Uh, on the coalition, we have people from the school board. We have people, uh, the counselors, and uh, just different ones from the school system. So we have somebody from just about all walks of life on that coalition. Good. We have uh, ministers, hospitals, so we're trying to reach out and touch everybody in the community, and we're doing a pretty good job of that. I'm uh, <coughs> concerned about those in Grand Prairie, Texas, that do not understand uh, some of the rules. Uh, we have a lot of Spanish-speaking people. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of, um, uh, of other countries that have uh, different languages than ours. Mm -hmm. and. Can we reach all of those, do you think, Becky, uh, with, with our words of wisdom and, uh, and help them to realize that this is a state law? And do you think that we have as much indication that uh, those different types of people are, are doing these things at home? Right. One thing that we try to do as a, as a coalition is to try to think about all the different people that we do need to reach. Yeah. So we do provide a lot of our materials in Spanish uh, we also have members of the coalition who are Spanish speaking. So for instance, if a group wanted to bring somebody out to talk about the campaign to a civic club meeting or a school PTA board or anything like that, 
um, we can provide Spanish speakers that can uh, speak to those groups. Oh, that is wonderful. Mm -hmm. And uh, from the resources at the school, are you allowed to go into the schools and do any teaching uh, or we, workshops? We actually work quite extensively with the South student empowerment team at both South uh -huh, and Grand okay. Prairie High School. Uh, the student empowerment team at, at South, we've been working with for several years and we have just been able to bring North on in this past semester. Um, but they are, these kids are just so enthusiastic and they, uh, we let them, we took them on a ropes course and they were very excited to do that. And then <laughs> we also took them to a safe driving summit in, in the fall and they actually applied for a grant, a $500 grant from Allstate and they were able to receive the grant. So they were able to do a safe driving campaign uh, throughout South Grand Prairie High School. Uh, it was called the Not So Sweet 16 campaign and part of that was the underage drinking and driving. Mm -hmm. Do we have any record or any knowledge of anyone, family, that has ever been arrested for having drinks or are we still just running up the test flags to let everyone know before we actually do anything, Lieutenant? Uh, yes, ma'am. We're still in the educational mode Okay. Uh, and we do a lot of that at nighttime also with our businesses. Oh, you do? Yes, ma'am, we do. Uh, we have some uh, minors that uh, help us to go out and educate the public and this is to our, our retailers. Uh, we will go and let the minors attempt to buy alcohol. You're giving my test run, aren't you? Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am, we are. Yes. Uh, and they will meet people in the parking lot, strangers, and tell them, look, I'm a minor, I want to have a party, I can't buy alcohol, will you buy it for me? So if they say yes, then the youngster gives them a card that's red, and it tells them what the state law is. So that's how we're educating them. If they say no, they give them a green card and say thank you for not contributing to the delinquency of a minor, and, and it also tells them what the state law is. So we're in the, still in the educational mode, however, next month now, we're going to start enforcing that also are you going to have to hire more officers to help you do all of this good stuff, or are you going to oh. count on everybody <laughs> being nice? <laughs> well, no, we can't hire any more officers to do this. We have to make do with what we have, yes. but we will rearrange our schedule yes. to uh, take care of those issues as they come up. And sometimes we have advanced warning that there are going to be certain parties and so forth. If we have enough warning, we may get to the parents first good, and say, did you realize that this is illegal for you to host a drinking party for teens? Some of them say they are not aware, so we educate them, uh -huh. and sometimes we can stop it in time. Mm -hmm. But what if they say, this <coughs> is my business, this is mm -hmm. my private property, this is uh, my kid and my kid's friends, yes. and et cetera, and they, they put up a strong argument. What, how do you react to that? Yes, ma'am, I had one of those last year. I got the notice about three hours before the party was to happen. So I went to the house and there was balloons in the yard advertising the party. The door was up and there sat two adult males sitting on a keg of beer drinking. So I went up and introduced myself and I said, are y'all having a party? Oh yeah, I said, what kind of party? Graduation. Graduation from what? You know, high school, college. Oh, my daughter's graduating from high school. Okay, what kind of party are you having? And I already had a flyer that said they're having a margarita machine, which is hard alcohol, yes. it's not the beer. Uh -huh. And they were already sitting on a keg of beer, drinking beer. And they said, well, yeah, we're gonna have a margarita machine and told me about 40 or 50 kids were coming. And I said, but sir, you can't serve alcohol to all these minors. He says, well, yeah, we're gonna be here in my house, it's okay. I said, no, sir, it isn't. So I informed him what the law was and he said, but some of their parents are going to be here. I said, but you cannot serve alcohol to other people's kids. And I informed him, yes, if you want to serve alcohol to your child, you can do that in your home, but you have to be present with them while they're drinking it. But you cannot give it to other people's kids. And he still could not get that. I said, okay, let me explain it to you this way. If you don't understand the law, the criminal side of it, which you can be prosecuted for, suppose one of these kids gets drunk, 
gets in their car, goes down the street, and kills someone. Well, whomever the family of the person they have killed or maimed is going to sue you in civil court. So to come up with the money for the judgment against you, you probably will have to sell your house. So if you have to sell your house, where are you going to live in? So getting in his pocketbook was the only way I could make him understand that he could not do this. Yes. I said, okay, now you have the decision, but I'm telling you, I'm going to have a couple of squads checking by here all all evening, and if we have one kid leave this house with any alcohol on them, I'm going to come back and get you. Well, the party was canceled. We did patrol that area that night. We had no problem. But sometimes you have to explain it to them more than just what the law is. Yes. Uh-huh. You have to get in their pocketbook. Yes. Get get to the down So it worked down that and time. Dirty. Yes, it worked that time. There are others that we know they're out there. Sometimes we hear of them before they happen. Sometimes we don't till after the fact. After the fact. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And we know that uh, kids from other cities come in here, especially down at the lake. Yes. We've already had one alcohol party down there which we addressed and so we're going to be on the alert for those too okay so it's it's the law and uh, and, and i i can tell you impact grand prix is uh backing you all the way to the bank aren't they oh yes That's oh that. yes that is good mm-hmm. that is wonderful and i believe i believe the city manager uh not only is the city manager but i think he has a an office in this impact grand prix doesn't he he is the chair, the of, chair our, of, of our committee, um, and then in addition, Judge Mike Petty is our co-chair, is our vice chair. Vice say. chair. Oh, yes. that's wonderful. And Mike Petty uh, is the justice of the peace in yes. Grand Prairie and does a uh, marvelous job, not only for Grand Prairie. I think he has other territory other than the city of Grand Prairie, doesn't he? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes, mm-hmm. that's wonderful. And mm-hmm. was he at your meeting last Monday? Yes, he was. He also spoke along oh, with Mayor England. Yes. Both of them are good speakers, aren't they? They were wonderful. Good. And Judge Petty um, talk, got to talk about our coalition, so we were kind of front and center, which was very exciting for us yeah. um, because it let other communities know how active our coalition is. All right, now how often does Impact Grand Prairie meet? Not not the one that you're affiliated with, but just our, gra- our Grand Prairie group. Do they meet monthly or weekly or whatever? Impact Grand Prairie meets the second Wednesday of the month in the council briefing room. Mm -hmm. Uh, This is the executive board meeting, but everybody is welcome to come. It's open meeting to the public? Yes. Oh, that's good. I'm glad that we put that forth. And do you get to attend that meeting? Yes, I do. That's because you're ex officio or you are a member of that group or what? Um, I'm kind of the administrative help. So I Uh uh, take the minutes Mm -hmm. and bring all the paperwork and make sure everybody gets signed in and that everybody has everything that they need. Now, Crystal Cleaver is the one that arranged for me to, gave me a call and says, you've got to have this on your show, Miss Ruthie. (laughs) And so... Where is Miss Crystal today? We're going to have to look for her, aren't we? <laughs> well, she was in Austin. Uh, I, I checked with City Hall, and I said, where is Crystal? And they said, she's in Austin. I don't know whether she's there this morning or not, but that's a good dodge for us, isn't it? <laughs> yes. And uh, is there anything else that you would like to tell us uh, that, that's forecast for, the, for these groups other than monitoring, especially beginning May 1st on? Um, I'd just like to share with um, the audience that we do have packets available if anybody would like to give out. Yes, show them what kind of nice packet they get. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, we have... Um, that has really been helpful for my research you. on this because uh, not being on the committee, I, I had to do my homework yes. on you all before getting here. It is a good packet. Here. It yes. is. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have specific packets for um, alcohol retailers. We also have them for business owners. Uh, we have them for churches. The church one actually has a PowerPoint in it. Mm-hmm. And oh, we'd it like to ask yes. ministers to show that to their their community because although they might not be providing alcohol to minors, they might know other people who are. Yes. So it's really beneficial to be able to share that word peer to peer. Um, and in the packets, um, there are sample fact cards. Yeah. As mm-hmm. well as um, we have window stickers that c- they're window slicks and you yes. just put them the inside of your mm-hmm. door. Uh, they also have posters. Um, this is the poster. That is a very nice poster. In mm-hmm. your buildings. Um, we also have email blasts that we can give to companies if they want to mm-hmm. send the message out to their entire uh, workforce. Oh good. Um, we also have packets for civic organizations. 
and I think that's it. Oh, and then like school groups, PTAs. I'm interested in the uh, the ministers group. Uh, do you have a ministers association representative on your coalition, or how do you uh, send the information? You have to wait for them to contact you, and you don't just send them to all churches or what? Yes, we are. Yes, we're all uh, taking those packets. My crime prevention unit is taking some of those to individual churches in Good. Grand Prairie. We've worked with church groups for years yes. in different uh, segments of uh, law enforcement. So yes, we started this last week taking those packets out to individual churches. And uh, we started with a few, but we're going to go back and uh, try to get every church in Grand Prairie. All right. Because most of them have youth groups yes. that we can, you know, educate the youth, but their parents also, with the PowerPoint Becky was talking about, I looked at all that when she first gave it to me to see what it was we were supposed to be disseminating, yes. and it is good information, so it's good enough that they can either show it to the whole congregation or just segments of it, yes. and especially to the youth groups. Youth groups. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, You'll excuse me a moment. I wanted to get a little bit more personal with the lieutenant. Ooh. <laughs> I know that you do lots of things in your line of duty because your assignments, I, kn I know a couple of things. You have the resource officers mm -hmm. under your direction mm -hmm. and you have crime prevention. Mm -hmm. And I know you have uh, lots of other things. I want to know all of the list of things. As a, as a, <laughs> that, that you, you're the different groups that you're responsible for, other than this wonderful Impact Grand Prix. You're doing a wonderful job with that. And I want to know what all other things so I can brag on you wherever I go. Oh, <laughs> well, okay. The Impact Grand Prairie group, uh, the alcohol enforcement, that comes under the crime prevention area. That's under crime prevention, yes. okay. Yes, right. uh, and that is another group that I have, uh, mm -hmm. the storefronts, crime prevention. Storefronts? The storefront officers. Okay, uh -huh. all right. Uh, of course, the school resource officers, and uh, then we have um, our youth group, the law enforcement explorers, that is young people male and female, 14 to 21. How long have you been doing the Explorers? Um, almost 24 years. 24 years, helping the kids. Do any of them ever become policemen or police oh. women? Yes, ma'am. Oh, they do? We have five right here in our own department that were former Explorers of mine. I call them my children. Yes. <laughs> they're adults, of course, because they're yes. police officers, but yes. I still think of them as kids. Yes. Uh, well, they're mature adults. Two of them have gone on to become sergeants here. Isn't and, that wonderful? Oh, it is. And uh, one of my crime prevention officers, we've got detectives, we've got patrol officers, two supervisors. Uh, we've had them to hire on in the jail and then dispatch. So yes, and then, uh, and they are wonderful because they get all this training while they're young and then they come into this department. And, and they're, they're living it, aren't they? Yes, Oh, yes. And then, of course, we have them in a lot of other cities. Yeah. I'll get phone calls or letters, or maybe I'll see somebody on the street I haven't seen in several years, and they'll come up, do you remember me? Yes. And now they have families of their own. As a matter of fact, I've started on second generation. Yes, <laughs> one of them showed up a couple of weeks ago, and he said, do you remember so-and-so? And I said, yes, I do. He says, he's my daddy. <laughs> So I'm starting on second generation. Second generation yes. in Explorers. And yes. scout, that scouting is such a good program. Yes, it is. And that's, that has been such a wonderful mm -hmm. help. Mm -hmm. Well, um, you have an impact because you have already built in network of people that you have taught from since they were yes. children. Yes, yes. Yes, and that, sure. that is really good. And uh, mm -hmm. I know they have a lot of confidence in you. And so that, that's a wonderful position to be sitting in a chair where you're it. Oh, <laughs> well, I don't know about being it, but <laughs> I do have my finger in a lot of pies. That, that is wonderful. Mm -hmm. Well, we're getting down to where we have about three or four minutes left on this, and uh, I want Becky, Becky, I want you to look out into your camera, and I want you to talk to the folks and tell them how important it is for them to know the state law, to abide by it, and where to call in case they need anything in Irving and then tell them where to call in Grand Prairie, Texas. Give them a little, about a three minute pitch here. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Impact Grand Prairie was founded in 2004, mostly because of stats that we had in the Texas School Survey that indicated that Grand Prairie's numbers in terms of alcohol and substance abuse were higher than the state average. Yes. Um, 
one of the statistics that we find kind of disturbing is that 71% of Grand Prairie High School students, or 7th through 12th graders, think that it's really easy to get alcohol in the city of Grand Prairie. Mm. Um, we're finding that a lot of parents do provide alcohol to their, their young people, um, thinking that when they have, this, have the young people at their house, that they're not going to be out drinking and driving. However, most parents do not stay in the same room as their kids when they're drinking, so they don't necessarily know what's going on in that room. So uh, we as a coalition are trying to educate parents, educate all of you, to not provide alcohol to minors. It's against the law, uh, and that's, that's really the most important thing. You can go to jail. You can lose your driver's license. It can become a fiscal responsibility. It's up to a $4,000 fine. And in addition, you can also um, be held civilly responsible if a, a child or youth does something or drinks at your house and then goes on to hit, a, hit somebody, uh, run into a building or anything like that. Um, Impact Grand Prairie, as we said, meets the thir second Wednesday of every month at the, city, at the council briefing room at City Hall. Uh, we invite everyone to come in and visit us to find out what we're trying to do in the community to make it safer and healthier for the youth of the community. You can also visit uh, the Those Who Host website, which is www.thosewhohost.org, which was kindly put together for us by the marketing department in the city. Uh, and then also uh, the coalition has its own website, and it's www dot impact communities dot com. That's wonderful. All right. You're next, Lieutenant. I want you to look out into your camera and encourage everyone to follow the law and to really mm -hmm. count on each parent to do their just due. Then you won't have to be called into service. That is so true. Uh, like Ms. Ruthie says, I do encourage each of you parents or guardians to please not furnish alcohol to your children and to understand it's not just against the law, but the damage that is done to these youngsters and by these youngsters when they're inebriated. Because you can look at anybody while they're intoxicated and see that they're not capable of functioning properly. So why would you allow your child to become like that? It not only causes them brain injuries from the studies, that you know it kills brain cells but then they may injure themselves or someone else and if they're in that state of course it becomes a habit so then they drop out of school and the devastation is just unbelievable in all aspects of their life well we want to thank both of you all so very much for coming and uh, putting forth some of the things that aren't really pleasant to some people but there, it's realism today, and it's the fact that we must face these things. And thank you, Lieutenant Barbara. You're we welcome. appreciate you so very much. Miss mm -hmm. Becky, it's been delightful to have you back. Thank you again. On two different sets. Yes. <laughs> yes, two different set twos. I want to thank you all and wish you Godspeed in all of the work. And thank you for the time and the effort that you contribute, especially to Grand Prairie, Texas. And this is Ruthie Jackson reminding you that history is as we live and do and that we document it correctly. <laughs>